this combination of two different apples. Granny Smith's and well, Granny Smith's and Macintosh. I use two different Why kinds of apples. The, uh, the, the Granny Smith's would make tartness for you and the, uh, and the Macintosh would give you flavor. So I'm going to cut those up. So anyways, uh, as you're, I don't know if anybody here has ever peeled apples before, this is the kind of, this is the method I use. I go around in a circle. Make sure your hands are washed before you start this. Like that. center like that. Okay anyways you can see that the uh, the apples are peeled and cored and I have a mixture of uh, Granny Smith and uh, Macintosh. The Macintosh is for the flavor, the Granny Smith is for the hardness. So now what I'm going to do is make the uh, crust here. I use Crisco as you can see I got Crisco over there. I use all-purpose flour. The ratio is two to one. In other words, uh, two cups of all-purpose flour to one cup of Crisco shortening, uh, uh, and a little bit of salt in there too. And you, you pretty well you're going you're going to have to get your hands in there and just do it and mush it up uh, and rub the rub the shortening in with the uh, with the flour. And uh, a little bit of, uh, I use a little bit of um, milk to put it all together. So as you can see, I'm going pretty full there. A little more than two cups. Because I find that with two pies, you really need more than, more than two cups to do it. You need, you need two full cups for one pie, at least. And then there's another two there. And I'm going to give it a little bit more just to be safe. Hopefully that'll do it. And a little dab of salt. Put it in your hand first. Probably about that much salt will do the trick. Just a touch there. And then what I'll do is I'll fill uh, this up to here. Crystal shortening in there for that much flour. That'll do it. Looks like a lot, right? But. But it takes a lot to make two big pies. And what I did was I used about six fairly large apples for each pie. I probably could have even used seven because I make the pies pretty full. Now once you get to this point here, you have to just slowly coat, coat the, uh, the shortening. And slowly, notice how my fingers they go like that. Now what happens is a lot of people they they don't really understand how to make a uh, good pie crust and so they'll make a pie crust and then the, the pie crust is very um, soft or, or uh, it's not flaky and it's um, kind of like a cracker sometimes. So you want to be able to just kind of rub it. Rub that shortening together with your fingers into the flour. And just keep on rubbing like that. until you get to a certain point. 
and then that's when you can start adding your liquid. But it's about there now. Sort of like this. Okay. You know, a little rubbing. Like that there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the amount of milk I have is not going to be enough, but you know, it's about this full here. You just kind of want to get it together. You don't really want to have it too full of milk or, or liquid. You just want to kind of spread the moisture around and then bring it all okay, together. Okay, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to I, uh, I squish the dough together and sometimes you have to sort of uh, squish it together two or three times but you just don't want to overdo it. And a lot of times people what they do is they start kneading, kneading this like a bread dough and it's not a bread dough. It's a pie crust dough. And I'm just going to cut it like that and like that. Okay. Okay, now these pie tins, they are, you know, they're supposed to be a non stick pie tin. But I still spray it and I put or some flour according to it. You know, you can go like that. Kind of like you're mining for gold or something like that. Uh, I find that it helps to bake the bottom. Spread it around a bit. Take that stuff off. I'll just roll it up like this. Oh, it's a little thick here, I can tell. You don't really want too thick on the bottom. You want thick enough to be strong, but if it's too thick, it won't bake through properly. And I'll just grab it onto there. Roll up into here. And then drop it down into the pan. And gently press it in. Get the air bubbles out, right? Cut it like that. So there, that's one, one pie bottom shell that's ready. So that's some pretty fast chopping there, isn't it? Let's take a look at those apples there now. You know, maybe I'll see some a little lighter, some a little darker. That's because some are Granny Smith and they have more uh, citric acid in them. And the darker ones are the Macintosh. But the Macintosh have better flavor. So anyways, I'm going to put the apples in here, and um, I spread them out a little bit, hopefully everybody can see. As you're doing it, try to split up the apples so that you don't get big uh, chunks, you know. Split them up like that. And don't go too far. Don't go crazy yet. I mean, putting all the apples in. Because you want to layer layer the cinnamon sugar in there. Okay, anyways, uh, a lot of people uh, uh, put sugar into the apple pie and of course you really didn't need it. But uh, it's the cinnamon part. Sometimes people get overboard and I'm making a lot of sugar there. I don't think I'll use that much, but a lot of people get overboard with uh, the cinnamon. So you don't really need so much cinnamon. You just want to enhance the flavor. But you do need cornstarch. Throw some cornstarch in there. And some cinnamon. Oh, I think I'm going to put too much in there. That, that already could be too much. But I'll see. Once I spin it around. I did have the oven turned on. I turned it on kind of early so it was really toasty in here. Okay, it doesn't look too bad there. Okay, so I'll spread out the cinnamon sugar like this. So it's got the cinnamon sugar in there. Uh, it's got the cinnamon in there, the sugar. Some people put nutmeg, that's alright, a little nutmeg. And you can put some lemon powder in there too. 
Okay, so I put some cinnamon sugar in there before I put my next layer of apples on there. So two layers of cinnamon sugar. This helps to bind it, helps to hold it together along with flavor. And you don't want to go too crazy with the cinnamon sugar either. You don't want it to be too sweet. Sort of like this, right? That's about it. Not much more than that. That's all you need. So anyways, this is egg wash here. I uh, put one egg in there with a little bit of water and I mixed it around. And I'll use that for the edges of this pie here right now. So that the top part, when I put it on, it will seal to it. That's so that the top crust will stick to the bottom crust. Now, if you don't have egg wash, you can use water. Some people do. But because I used the egg wash for the top crust later on, and uh, the albumum in the uh, egg gives it a, bit, a little bit of a binding effect. And I'll roll this up here. I'm a little concerned this crust is a little too thick. But that's alright, I'll just bake a little bit longer. And I'll just roll it out on top of this one. Now, I can feel right now the crust is slightly too thick. But it'll be alright because I'll, I'll give it enough baking. And I'm pressing, I'm pressing here both the bottom and the top. Press that around so that they both stick together. You can tell this is a pretty massive pie. There, so that's all pressed around there. And I'll take my knife and I'll cut along the edges here. But on the bottom part of the uh, of the edge of the pie plate. Because the pie what a lot of people do is this is a kind of like a, a traditional edging to it of using the fork on the edge and egg wash on top. That will help to give it some brownness. Right along the edges there. And then once I do that, it's the time to put a little bit of granulated sugar on top too. This is kind of a traditional thing. Put a little granulated sugar just on the top like that. Not too much because it'll, it'll brown it too much, right? Even the egg wash will brown it a little bit. And then what people do is they, they'll put five little holes to let the steam come out. Doesn't have to be five, but that's what they normally do. Put five little holes in there to let the steam come out. So anyways, we got uh, two beautiful apple pies here. One's a little bit lighter, but it is, it is baked enough. And I'm gonna give um, one of them to my neighbor next door. I, last time I made two apple pies, I gave one to the neighbor on the right hand side. So this time I'll give uh, one to uh, the neighbor on the left hand side. Now it's very tempting to uh, eat this pie right away. You know it smells so good. But you have to let it cool down. So it's going to take about an hour or so. And then we'll bring it over next door and give them a nice little surprise. So anyways my wife's going to freak out if she sees out in the bottom of the oven. So I have to get that cleaned up before she gets home. Real fast. <laughs> 